and salutations to all my listeners wherever you are. This is Pamela Tartar, and you're listening to Factor 9 on Pure Momentum Network. My very special guest today is Dr. Richard Allen Miller. Dr. Miller is a pioneer in the annals of metaphysical and paranormal exploration. Miller began working in the X-Files world of Navy Intel, later Steel Corps, and then MRU in the late 60s. His public collaboration and research continue. As an original Black Ops team member, Miller's research in the field of paranormal began as a graduate physicist working 11 years with Navy Intel in anesthesiology. During this period, numerous foundational papers, including a holographic concept of reality and embryonic holography were written. His past and current writings and presentations reveal a depth of knowledge and practical experience in three major fields, alternative agriculture, new age physics, and metaphysics. Miller now writes for Nexus Magazine and is a preferred guest on internet radio. He is re-emerging at a critical time in humanity's evolution where metaphysics and practical survival converge. Richard Allen Miller is a physicist, a biophysicist, herbalist, author, and his books can be found at oak-publishing.com. And I'll give these all of these uh, websites several times during the show. You can also follow Dr. Miller on Facebook and his website, richardallenmiller.com. Richard, R-I-C-H-A-R-D, Allen, A-L-A-N, M-I-L-L-E-R dot com. A cordial and wholehearted welcome to you, and thank you for joining me on Factor 9, Pure Momentum Network, Richard Allen Miller. Thank you, Pamela. Nice, David. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say after an intro like that. <laughs> well, well, I, I hope walk on like water you. like Peter Sellers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I, I appreciate you sharing your time and your presence with us today. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Now, I would like to begin with um, uh, a book of yours titled Power Tools for the 21st Century and Workbook One. Now, uh, what led you to write these books? I know it's a trilogy. And tell me more about the other titles in this series. Well, well... <laughs> Um, I'm 70, and um, at age 50, I was basically set for life. I was retired, had property, had money in the bank, etc. And in 1960, I was traveling the world. I was doing whatever I wanted to do. I was retired. I'm pretty much done with things. And in 1960, I had a little girl die of leukemia in huh. my home. And in order to get her the medical attention she needed, um, which was essentially $10,000 a day, I had to go back to zero. That means they took my land from me, my savings, and at one point, my will to live. It, you know, you start medicating, uh, you're, you're just totally lost. You're not supposed to lose. She died when I was 60, a little uh, 59, and uh, basically, was 15 and a half years old. She got ill when she was 12. So there was like almost three years of no hope. Um, um. And, yeah, and uh, what then happened is I <laughs> woke up at 60 and realized that I had to sing for my dinner again. I had to start all over. And so I started writing books. This last year, I came out with four titles this year. I have 10 titles that have been completed. Now, 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 track with me for a moment. I have been writing for 40 years. I have books that were bestsellers back, you know, in the 70s. Anarchist Cookbook, Magical Mushroom Handbook. I was a very naughty boy. I wrote some very, I was MacGyver for the military. <laughs> oh, okay, that's why I'm writing right now, because, you know, I have to basically sing for my dinner 
if I want to travel, I have to basically do workshops and things like that. No problems. I've been to Australia and Mexico this last year uh, in extended, beautiful vacations, working with Nexus Magazine, and then down in Mexico with my mentor, Dr. Stanley Krippner. And these people are bringing me out of the closet, if you will. And for the last 35 years, I've been a farmer. They, I work now for congressmen. Uh, what I do is network rural communities and bunkers. And in your state, it would have been Dennis Ducinich that I worked with. Right. And so um, it's Ohio. And uh, I remember I did an interview with Dennis when we first got to know each other way, way back when. And uh, basically, I told him that it was a three-hour interview, went into four states. And he, uh, I told him that um, if he wanted to interview me, that he had to drink absence with me. <laughs> how worked. did he do? And by the third, by the third hour, we were. How do they put it in Tarot? Oh, we were into our cups. <laughs> you know, ears are optional. And when he's, you know, as we got crazier and crazier, he said I sounded like Buddha. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> and so hence the postman which is not kevin costner it's if you read the book um it it's about a supercomputer in um a corvallis that as the world goes down into a black hole red collapses war or whatever warlords spring up all over it is about a supercomputer in corvallis that evolves their society while everybody's falling down into a black hole. And the reason <clears throat> he called me a supercomputer is that my gift uh, is that I'm basic. I have what's called an eidetic memory. It's better even than a photographic memory. I was born with it. Uh, basically, I am a four-year-old that never turned seven. And now I'm 70 years old. What do you want to know? And wow. that's, that's, yeah. And <laughs> uh, in specific areas, and I'm a physicist. And so I've been, and I worked for the smoking man, Dr. Carl Schleicher. I wrote the very first eight episodes of X-Files before they brought Carter in, because that was, those episodes were things I did, including wow. spacecraft. Yeah, okay. So I've been there and done that. I can tell you that it wasn't as glamorous as you're making it out <laughs> at all. It was that I was doing it because nobody else could. I mean, you know, we caught a lot of flies in mouth open in disbelief. I still don't know a, a probably most of what I did, what it all means. I have yeah. ideas, and this is why it has led me toward metaphysics. Now, the three book series that I'm writing that you're talking about, I have other books. Uh, how about a five volume set on the Encyclopedia of Alternative Agriculture? And there are over 360 deep PDFs on the farming of specific herbs and the ethics of marketing that I've written papers and so on. You can find that at my email address, nwbotanicals.org. And that's for Northwest, because that's what I did for 35 years. I exported, uh, you know, products into Germany that we wildcrafted or otherwise farmed here in North America. Most of my farming is up in Canada because they took to that like a duck to water. I've written with Acres USA. I was Chuck Walters, one of his pallbearers. And so I am a giant in agriculture. And very few people know of me in terms of my work in physics. And that's what I'm writing now. And the first book in the series was called ESP Induction Through Forms of Self-Hypnosis, How to Think with Your Gut. That was the first protocol I developed for Navy SEALs to begin making them supermen. The second book this one that you're going to discuss today are the eight protocols I developed for SEALs to make them supermen. 
Um, and it includes things like breathing and brain drivers and biofeedback, how to go through interrogation. I haven't even written on that. The workbooks that accompanied it were the actual little ditties that they would use, like tarot and things of that nature, I Ching. When they didn't know what to do, we throw the I Ching. That didn't mean we used it as an advisory, like people do astrology. And believe it or not, when you deal, so the first protocol, and this is important, that defined the first Navy SEAL, SEAL Unit 1 through, and I trained number two and three, those were based on intuition. That's where we started. We could always put muscle and bulk on that man. We could always teach him how to blow up a bridge. What we were really after was his ability to clearly think. And that's the problem. When you use your brain, that's there to make your belief systems true, which means it'll get you shot. Right. And if you work, okay, well, and so intuition, emotional or EQ, being able to think with the gut was the bottom line because that place is outside space and time. That's right. why they call it ESP with precognition and all the other little ditties that go into that definition of being intuitive. The second book were the other set plus that one, the seven protocols, because there were eight basic protocols, each one designed around, you know, foods, breath, air, you know, that, that place, or fire, you know, the elements, how to relate to it. And it turned out it's organized so that it follows hierarchy of awareness and that's why the series is called toward an evolution of consciousness and uh, taking personal responsibility for your own evolution the third I love book that i love well, that, it's, Rick. It's, well it's it's uh, the rapture never came and got me how about you <laughs> <laughs> i'm still sitting here i'm waiting. not waiting for it i'll tell you okay that. well try this one for a metaphor if you uh, want to, uh, uh, you know, be complacent, sit on the couch and figure I'll do it another no lifetime. Imagine what the next lifetime is going to be with a gas mask and a Geiger counter. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, it's a metaphor. I but know. It's, it's a metaphor. I know. But that's what it's about. And really, you and I are too old to do change this world. But how, what what is happening is that your children and your grandchildren are watching you. And that's how they learn how to do it. Right. And so it is important to take, you know, spiritually, your own ship. You know, what's actually happened in this world, and I haven't said this much, but it's truth, is that somehow religions have somehow created an emissary to speak to God on your behalf. Right. How does that work? Yeah. And when I, when I, you know, that's not the way it works, you no. know, because each of us is different. Right. It doesn't mean there are different gods, but that part is your insecurity right. of not knowing if you're really on the right track or not. So the more people you can drag along with you gives you, <laughs> I don't, well, I mean, Makes that's you know, yeah. two lemmings over the cliff and I'll wait for my 27 virgins waiting for me up in heaven. <laughs> And the worst oh, part is those virgins are probably armed and dangerous waiting for me. <laughs> so how's that one for an you're, pro you're probably right. They are going to be armed and dangerous. Oh, well, okay. that's how they got there. Uh, right. Look, uh, the whole thing is nuts. And it's about distractions and losing sight yes. of what's really important. Yeah, That's right. And, you know, Rick, I, I talk about the word belief. Okay, right in the middle, belief is the word lie, L-I-E. And the reason we're so off base is because we're distracted with lies. And we're going to talk about this later as we go through the chapters. But if you don't deal with your belief systems and get rid of them and surpass them, you will end up living your whole life out of lies. I uh, might add that rather than getting rid of them like ego, 
ego is not something you want to get rid of. No. It is what makes you lonely and separate from me. And basically, beliefs are the same things. You don't want to get rid of them. They're tools. And when the tool is inappropriate, you put it in, in a drawer like Jesus Christ. And you fold it up. And you're like That'd be if you were going into Iraq as a Sanch Christian, that belief thing will get you killed. Yeah. And so what I'm going to suggest next is I have a pair of bell-bottom pants. <laughs> I'm never going to fit in again. Oh. <laughs> but do you think I'm going to throw those jeans away? No way. Well, there you go. Now you're getting the metaphor. Yeah. yeah. Just because you put it aside, it doesn't mean you get rid of it. It might be a favorite uh, belief thing, uh, something that you cling to, like you want to believe that. Um, realize that that part is about intentionality. It is, That's yeah. where you structure the universe because yeah. imagination is reality. And yeah. so you have to be very mindful on the thoughts you choose to entertain. That's right, because they're creations. It doesn't matter where they came from you or they came from Sam. Right. You know, son of Sam or whatever, you know, someone out there stalking right. you. Yeah, whatever. Uh, right. That is, it doesn't matter. You, right. uh, that's why saints in history have all said training the mind is essential. That's what meditation is about. Right. Stilling it and making it your tool, not a driver. Right, right. Instead of a weapon, it can be a tool, right? Well, it's, uh, it, you know, I want to be, I don't want my message to be uh, deterred because of my beliefs. I want to use my my limitations as uh, tools that actually make me unique. That's the ego part of your, that's where belief and ego have a, have a nexus. It's what also separates you from me. Uh -huh. And when you start to look at the bigger picture of it, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. <laughs> Love oh, is the law. Love yeah. under will. And that's the deal. There are many different kinds of love. And the first and primary ones the Greek thought about was telema, the love of purpose, the love of will. You're, you're, why you're here. And once you do that, nuns will say nay. That is called the flow. Wow. Now, I know I gave it to you on metaphor, and so everybody that heard this will hear it differently. I'm very clever that way because oh, I'm. How did they say, oh, Carl Young? What's it like to be on the shoulders of a great man? And you know, Sigmund Freud. And Carl Young looked down and said, "Well, one can see much further from up here." <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But that is the metaphor of why we have memes and why we separate holographically your physical from the emotional, intellectual. The archetypal, the fourth place up, is where you and I become one. That is the collective unconscious place. And that's only halfway to God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know the other half is straight up. It's impossible. Oh, straight no, up, no. okay. Uh, I, you need a pilot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Someone I wanna, that knows I want to make way. sure. I want to make sure that we get that other book in the trilogy because we talked the, about ESP and yeah. power tools. And what's the third one? Yes, the non-local mind okay. in a holographic universe. How to change the movie? Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Well, um, and I'm going to do it with agriculture and children. It's educational reform with a paradigm shift in agriculture. Agriculture and food should not be on a monetary system. They should be like water. You I select agree. where you want to live by the food you want to eat and the water you want to drink. I say the same thing. It should, it should be free. It shouldn't have anything to do well, with someone. Well, that's the barter concept of gardening and 
community right. supported agriculture and you know Renault's funeral tonight. <laughs> well, now um, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about your relationship to Nick Begich, please. Nick is um, Nick is a reporter. He's not a scientist. Nick's right. Okay, he is. That's basically what Nick does. He reports, and he's very good at that. And he always needed a Spock. And that was originally Patrick Flanagan. And when Pat's wife died of a drug overdose, there was an issue, and they distanced each other. And Nick was then solo for a period. And he and I met in Brisbane for Nexus. And then later in Amsterdam, and then da 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 da, -da. <laughs> and we became best friends. And I'm now his, well, uh, Spock. You know, I'm a se I'm second. I'm the science officer that when he's not sure, he would always, you know, ask me. Mick Nick has been very, and he was he published my first book. He writes the foreword in all of my books because Nick was the one that essentially, or I'll give him credit, brought me out of retirement and started writing for Nexus Magazine and those kinds of things. And now my work is being, you know, grokked on another level on terms of why military used me as their primary physicist. By the way, when I was in Mexico, it was interesting. I, they were, I had done a two-day workshop on the first weekend and then there, during the week, we were doing radio and TV, promoting the big conference with, you know, even Alexander, nor, uh, uh, Paul Sheely. You know, there were some big names there. And um, this was my coming out party. And they decided to use me on this Barbara Walters-like TV show. This, she's the Mexico's equivalent of Barbara Walters. Will you see that? armed encampment i went through to get in there it was really uh, yeah well all the you know the cartel lives back there of the president of okay so what happened was her big burning question to me was at the pinnacle of your career when you essentially ran the pentagon why did you turn your back on your career and everything <laughs> and walk away and become a dirt farmer and my response so went viral in Mexico and the president of Mexico was listening and called the studio while we were still on the air and asked for a personal audience. And what I'm doing with him right now is a similar project I did in Chattanooga where I have a bunch of children growing wildflowers to make salads to feed the homeless in Mexico City. I have never seen anything like Mexico City. I, I, I've seen slums and things. I've never seen anything like Mexico City. It was like an eye opener. And the, all the different neighborhoods were walled in armed encampments, basically stretching for maybe 70 miles. My word. It was, it was, I've never seen 22 million people. And uh, I've never seen anything like it. And yet... The children in the streets were happy. I saw that also. Even though there's white slavery, drugs, uh, you know, violence, and all the rest, spousal abuse, that's very big. Uh, what I saw were the children were happy. And I wondered why and started to take a closer look. And what I saw was the family was still intact. Yeah. The, ch the mother ran the roost. Grandma was most respected but it was the mother that ran things and we don't even have that in the united states and as we are becoming more like mexico with no middle class uh we have the children today have no role models the family right. has disintegrated the schools are totally right. inequipped to teach them those kinds of values and so what you have next is social networking and it's crazy because now the three key words that were used for Americans when I was in Mexico, the same ones that are used in Europe, 
These three keywords are ill-informed, ignorant, and complacent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I don't get anything else out but that point alone, everybody's got it. It's that, yeah, well, it's time to get off the couch. You know, whether you want to or not, it's not going to happen until you do. And if you don't, you just get to come back with a gas mask next time. Yeah, right. Well, that's it well, just becomes a little more difficult. Right, right. Now, will you tie up exactly Angel. what it is that you're doing down in Mexico right now? Well, I've got a bunch of 4,000 children working in a huge set of gardens growing wildflowers because they love it. That, that means that children are learning agriculture as a community sport. Great, great. And then they pay it forward by feeding the homeless. That's and this marvelous. is, they go into the streets, they have to, you know, chaperones. And the kids walk up to people sitting in the streets and hand them food. Now, that's four to nine-year-olds. Wow. 14-year-olds, <laughs> I've got a plan. <laughs> yeah. and, and basically, this is a small group of children that can grow food for a large group of adults, and it's non-GMO. Oh, and everybody right. gets it. Yeah. It is food choices. Right. It's right. not, you know, something that came from Mexico, like an avocado, you know, because right. on, uh, here's the deal. The geoengineering has messed up our weather. We are now going to have a severe drought as a result in California. The Californian farmers are already in default and are following their land. That means there will be no produce this right. year. Right. Okay. And that means the Teamsters, Arabs, get a bigger piece of the of the pie from delivery from Guatemala. Now, the bad news is that means you're going to have less produce at higher prices. Uh, and it's going to happen now. And uh, what's next is that Putin and Russia have formed an alliance with Iran and China on the petrodollar. Yeah, I read and about that, that. Okay, well, then there it is. <laughs> Page yep, two. There it is. And NASA just came out with a 114 slide presentation called The Future of War. And page eight says, suggests, Spaceship Earth is now having riots in different places on, the, on, on, on control decks. They're messing with life support, and there is no owner's manual. That's the way page eight goes in NASA. Oh, and we oh. go downhill from there with Kurzweil and our romance with transcendence. My goodness. I, I am this. I am the postman. I'm here to tell you there are other ways that by taking control of your belief systems and using them, that doesn't mean you get rid of them, but use them properly. And do you think charismatics is a, you know, charismatic churches, holy roller, that kind of thing. You have to understand the mentality of a type of person that would go blindly into that and realize the terrible responsibility they are incurring on their teacher or leader. Yeah. So yeah, wow. that's the first thing you have to realize is why are you doing this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Well, uh, Rick, we need to uh, take a little network break here and uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. You're listening to Pamela Tartar and my guest, Dr. Richard Allen Miller. And you're listening to the show called Factor 9 on Pure Momentum Network. And we'll be right back after a few messages.
Welcome, everyone. I'm Deborah Tavares of StopTheCrime.net, and I welcome you to Stop the Crime on the Pure Momentum Network. I am committed to exposing the ongoing war being waged, not only against all American people, but the entire global population, by international central banking cabals and their minions. We will be talking to you about the silent weaponized systems of assaults upon the population, which will help to define what everybody knows. Something is terribly wrong. The corporate banking system has created the illusion that we have a legitimate government, and we do not. This corporate structure has gradually taken control of our country's economy, legal system, intelligence, military, scientific, and political operations. Only by understanding your reality will you be able to engage in solutions, and there are solutions. And we must engage, we must help others, we must live in right conduct and not be afraid. Visit us on the Pure Momentum Network and StopTheCrime.net. An amount necessary or sufficient to have a significant effect or to achieve a result. This is Critical Mass. Greetings, fellow organic beings on planet Earth. My name is Pamela Tartar. I host Critical Mass on Pure Momentum Network. My awareness tells me humanity is reaching a tipping point. A choice must be made. Either we choose continuing under ever-worsening tyranny, or we stand up in our humanity and create a new world of love, abundance, compassion, empathy, and all the human attributes and features. I invite you to join me as we explore who we are and find tools inside us enabling us to stand tall and strong against the opposition. Now is the time. Pamela Tartar, Critical Mass. Welcome back, listeners. This is Pamela Tartar with my special guest today, Dr. Richard Allen Miller. And we're having a fabulous, exciting conversation about one of his books out of a trilogy. And it's called Power Tools for the 21st Century and Workbook One. That's what we're dealing with today. Now, you can all go to oak, like the oak tree, dash, publishing.com and see all his books there there i think there's about 15 and uh, but today we're we're dealing with power tools for the 21st century and the workbook one and you're going to want to get this book when we're finished because we are going to titillate you all the way through two hours so welcome back rick we're we're back on the air and we can dig right in again sure <laughs> <Cool>. he's back <laughs> yeah how about some historical content about your work with Navy Intel? Yeah, well, uh, all of those chapters were things that we did back in the early 70s. SEAL Corporation was before it was called Navy SEALs, and I was not in Navy. I was at GS-18, top secret clearance with vault permits. That means I worked with two-star generals and full bird colonels. And that's where I started. Wow. So I could, <laughs> Nothing well, like yeah, starting at the I, top, right? <laughs> well, I was, uh, I was a protege by old man DuPont, uh, historically. Um, they put a bullseye on me in my junior and senior year in high school. Uh, in 1960 and 61. I created, I wrote a mathematical paper in my junior year called A New Maison Field Theory. It was based on Yukawa's work out of Japan, and I proposed a new elementary particle, which is now called the muon, and it created what was called a tachyon factory. And that was what I did as a high school junior. Wow. In my senior year, I then built a linear accelerator with a hydrogen bubble chamber, and I was the first American to demonstrate particles going faster than the speed of light. 
the Russians had gotten a Nobel Prize for that the year earlier, and I was the first person in the world to duplicate their work in uh, as a high school student. And then two years later, those two experiments were used on the Mariner in 1964 as a flyby on Mars to measure the water on it. And I'm going to say something here. That's what I did as a high school student. And so they orchestrated my entire education from then on. I started at the University of Washington and ended up at Washington State University. And they brought in a professor uh, to chair that physics department because of me. He was known as Raymond Band and Band Theory. He was English. And Dr. Knowles was brought in from Yale that had we built a linear accelerator on campus. Washington State University is the university that owns the gravity wave generator in Houston that's managed by MIT and Caltech because I was at Washington State University. I then, when I graduated, and by the way, I did an undergraduate thesis. I had degrees in physics. As a undergraduate, I wrote a undergraduate thesis and built a plasma jet in between my junior and senior year, which was the first plasma jet that was later used by Giannini to allow the space shuttle to go into space. Oh my and that's, God. That's what I did as an undergraduate. You're not even going to believe what I did in my time. <laughs> I I, I've got a TARDIS, which I like to go for a little ride. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen, well, I'm going to you... teach you how to change timelines using power tools. What power tools are, are basic physics enhancements. It gets you there quicker. Let me give you an example. Age 50, let's say, you decide you want to have the brain of someone that has meditated for 30 years. How are you going to do that before you kick? Well, you could use brain drivers and get there in three years. You could use biofeedback and learn how to control heart rate, pulse, respiration, and brain waves so that you can do your own brain entrainment. You could use NLP to be able to withstand interrogation and or interrogate. <laughs> and so uh, basically, like with biofeedback, to learn how to control your heart rate, drop it or raise it, um, you can do that very quickly. And then the quality of it requires you to relearn it every couple of years. Whereas a meditator in the thirty years knows how to do that. However, since I've been using biofeedback for thirty years, I'm now a city, a, a city, you know, or a, uh, you know, one of these uh, side guys that does phenomena. <laughs> wow. Paranormal. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. It, you, you start using these tools, and at some point now, you've got 30 years into them, and uh, brain drivers will do brain entrainment so that you can take control of how you do memory, things of that nature. There's all kinds of things you can do with toys. Drugs work really well, you right. know, if you use them appropriately. LSD is currently used for the terminally ill that have a fear of death. And wow. so there is a lot of things that have double edges. Magic is a shortcut uh, through the woods and like getting to grandma's house. And there are bid bag rules. Like if you're in magic, yeah. which is an advanced form of physics with a mystery school. And basically what you would think of as magic is next century physics. I agree with and, that. I well, it's one way of time. looking. Yeah, but that's uh, we'll put a big sign like Mulner. I want to believe. <laughs> 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 so be careful, lady. I can play you six ways, and what we do is instead of poking a button, we'll play a piano and do a a jazz concert. <laughs> oh, that'll be great! I love. But that. wouldn't that be wonderful to see yourself being poked and inched and and challenged and this and that? as a music 
And that's the level that's available to all of us is that place of joy. Yeah. And joy is like, I have this thing. I used to have two cups. I've added a third cup. And they're all half full of uh, yellow liquid. And the one is half full. God gave me something. The other is half empty. I've lost something. And the other, the third one is full of piss. I won't drink it. <laughs> uh, you know, it's metaphor. And being able to say what's in front of you. You have that choice. That's right. why you are God's favored. And if we've been invaded, you know, aliens, whatever. How about in the blood types, gene four of uh, the draconian bloodlines or the bloodlines of Christ that, uh, uh, you know, Sir Lawrence Gardner and others have written about. Right. Uh, okay. That, that's where I would hide is if I were an alien. And so the war for the planet is going on inside each of us is a metaphor. And that's, you have choice. And so to look at it that way allows you to truly evolve as an entity. And uh, for me, I am simply giving you some footprints that I discovered for myself. Awesome. And well, there are toys, <laughs> you know, Physics, the leading religion of the world. Let there be light. And the physicist reached over and went click, and it was good. <laughs> I like it's it. All, I like it. Well, yeah, Mikey likes it. Mikey's dead. I got to be careful here. You know, I mean, it's important to realize that the answers and the truth are not out there. That is illusion. The physical plane is where you and I have gone to be sick spiritually. Right. And once you look at it from that point of view, that everything happens for a reason, and everything leads to something better, that place, that belief system, that will take you to joy. And what we call the flow, where instead of ricocheting off the wall, kicking and screaming, you find the natural track in the road with a sports car. <laughs> and, okay. Well, it's a, it's a way of being. Sure, sure, absolutely. Now, um, back I love the, the laughter, by the way. You do it just at the right places, too, by the way. I, <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> well, that means you're kidding what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I'm sitting here nodding my head, and, and I know you can't see it, so I have to giggle every once in a while. I'm laughing at myself, too, because I am nodding my head because I do get it and I do understand. Does that and mean you're dyslexic? Do you hum? <laughs> no, I don't really hum. I'll let you do the humming. <laughs> oh, I do that. I'm actually rocking right now. I am a functioning savant. I, I Literally, I hum to myself. Oh, man, you ought to see me in theaters. I, I get kicked by, you know. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to be mindful of my own uh, dragging my knuckles. Oh, my thing. goodness. Well, my dream catcher has got a pair of female underwear with a beer can and a plug hanging from it. That would be my dream catcher. <laughs> Redneck dream catcher. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just a guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're a guy. I'm a girl. <laughs> um, now, I want to get back to this uh, uh, basic tools to create a Superman. Now, in the 70s is when you discovered these, right? Well, late 60s, yes. Uh -huh. okay. Late 60s is when I did Seal Corporation. That will be a book titled The Seal Reports, and there will be 12 chapters on that because there were 12 reports. The second book that sequels that is called Spook Central, and it's the work I did from MRU, including the Pentagon. And uh, they'll be on, uh, there's a bunch of chapters on that because I wrote a bunch of things like Carillion photography, and then I went into bioluminescence, and then I <laughs> went into a bunch of different things. We had the first artificial uh, uh, intelligent computer at the Cahotec. Oh, yes, we had comets even back then. The Cahotec conference in, uh, in uh, where was it? It's in Katadi or somewhere up there in, in Northern California. And I tell you, uh, Santa Rosa, it was in Santa Rosa, uh, 
Claremont. No, it was in Claremont. Yeah, Claremont. It was in Claremont. They have a university there. And uh, let me tell you, uh, those stories can all be found if you Google, I married the Wizard of Oz. And that was written by my ex-wife, Iona, who is CIA. And so we, you know, that's not me. That's someone else writing what she saw I do for the military, for Navy. And it all back then was DuPont, who was in charge of the the technical. He reported to Rockefeller. And that's all changed now. I remember when Monsanto was in one of DuPont's ownership as a weapons company that made 2,4-D, Paraquat, and then Agent Orange. Yeah. And so, well, get a grip. And now, Monsanto is what we call a transnational corporation. And it's bigger than DuPont. Mm-hmm. So things are changing. And if you wanted the big picture metaphor, you could basically say that the Illuminati is a bunch of Jesuits out of the Church of Rome. Uh, battling China on minimum wage. And wow. China, at, well, that's the way that works. Yeah, Money yeah. isn't real. Right. And so the petrodollar isn't really real. Watch what happens. It's next year now that Russia and China and Iran have hooked up in pipelines. Yep, yep. I heard that, and I heard that... Um, that uh, China is actually paying in gold, and that's why they made such a big uh, a big deal in the beginning. You know, <laughs> Sitchin, <laughs> and that gold Dyson sphere, give me a grip, man. Uh, these ideas were even back around when I was in the heyday. And I have to tell you, there were lots of claims being made secret life of plants where you can talk to the animals is that true or not true baxter and so there were a bunch of reporters that went out and started writing about all of that and making it a modern myth (laughs) and yet out of that would come something that i wrote on the mozart effect and when you play mozart to chickens and you feed them purslane, an antioxidant, they will lay a 25% lower cholesterol egg. Now, Mormon, or not the Mormons, the Quakers did that up and down the eastern seaboard. They played for their free-range chickens, Mozart. And really? Worked. Well, it's less stress. Get a grip. That's what we're talking about. Now, what is stress? And so that's what I would focus on. In metaphor, what is beliefs, what are breathing techniques, okay. that kind of thing. Okay. See, we've got a foot and we haven't even done half your questions. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, right. now, um, the mushrooms uh, are to be food and medicine, and they have been for many, many, many years. Did you use this information to, to when you worked for the SEALs? I mean, did, did the... Did that have anything to do with with getting people in good shape? Workbook, workbook two, will talk about the other six superfoods that were used, and when you put one to another, it forms a diagram. It it becomes a power tool. That's where you take two superfoods, and the way you put them together, one over the other in the diagram, makes it behave as a superfood in the case of chapter one in power tools i chose cordyceps and transfer factor and both of those by using smaller amounts of transfer factor lower in the diagram okay what that did is create an antibiotic substitute ah that's great well that's at workbook two that is will be coming out this year that there's three workbooks for power tools. Workbook two will, for each chapter, in terms of continuous breathing and virtual audio, offer six other things dealing with air. And Wonderful. how you put them, yeah, and how then you do your own research in terms of one over the other 
as to what it'll do next for you. And that gives you like 64 permutations there. Good luck with that, baby. Because oh, when you do that, now you are me. I am the walrus cuckoo cuckoo. <laughs> Okay, I could be Superwoman then, right? You can be super androgynous if you'd really oh, like. Okay. <laughs> you have that choice and direction and to discover. Cool, cool. Now let's move on to um, the work you did with uh, higher self uh, in communicating with the conscious mind and how you use that as a tool. You're talking about ESP and thinking with your gut? Being able to be precog or uh, change, you know, astral project where you can go take a look, see, like a shaman does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's ESP. Uh, and ESP uh, is basically from the enteric nervous system, which is your first brain. That's why there's a non local mind out there. <laughs> right. The bigger one. <laughs> yeah. And if you use it, in a holographic universe, then it has certain kinds of solutions. And that would allow you to change the movie. And if you want to see how that works, there is a brand new science fiction movie coming out called Lucy, <laughs> where uh -huh. she gets access to 100% of her brain. And what happens next? Watch the trailer. That ought to blow you away. I will. I Lucy, will watch it. the trailer, and I am your lead scout. I'm the one that talked to you about transcendence with Johnny Depp and the fact that Stephen Hawking has a deep concern with where we're going with transhumanism and our romance with machines. Well, I do, too. I just did a show two weeks ago on transhumanism, and I only touched the surface. I'll be doing another one, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm with him. Now, Imagine I, you doing it with Kurzweil and a couple of other people I could add in on nanotechnology and show you where that NASA document goes with it. Oh, I bet. That would you be have exciting. have no idea. Well, that's page eight. You know, we're messing with life control, uh, uh, you know, life, life control, and, and there's no owner's manual. So with that, you know, we have no idea what we're doing. And this geoengineering, Fukushima, uh, GMOs, they are essentially attacking us on every single level. Our, the foods we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe. Right. And, and we're also being attacked on our shelter. Uh, everything we need for life because there's never been more foreclosures and the economy is so bad that I think you can add shelter in there. We're just being attacked on every level. Hey, you know what they did in Iceland? Yeah. <laughs> Hang the bankers .com. And what they did, 42 bankers. Right. Okay. And what did they do with the bank money? They, they gave, gave it, it to the people. That's right. For their mortgage. They own their and land. You know, and you know who started <laughs> that? Women with their pots and pans and oh, spoons making racks. <laughs> Isn't that great? Stuff for death. Yeah. The basic way I would say it is, I don't understand why women are trying to compete with men when they are already superior. <laughs> well, I agree with that, Rick. And I, uh, I talk about how it's necessary for women to stay women. And I think this whole business that they're trying to get women to be men is insane. And it's, well, to, it's to destroy our whole society. Well, that's a distraction. How about this one? In the tree of life, there's two there's middle pillar, which is what I'm doing. Uh, it's a form of discipline. There's the two outer pillars. One is male, one is female. And the two paths, the very top, that go to God, is the hermit and the lovers. You either do it androgynous with the hermit, or you do it with a pair where your physical uh, is being represented by the mate you choose, the inner masculine part of you called the anima and animus and that's james hellman and so it's in metaphor you have both in you why uh, listen in in laboratories in 1978 
I could, with a pair of electrodes on the top of your head, change your sex preference. Oh, my. Just doing neurotransmitters. That's magic, but that's the 21st century magic using sound and light rather than 20th century magic, Aleister Crowley, with drugs. Drugs are a valid way, but they have a lot of risk. You know, Leary, when he wrote The Varieties of Psychedelic Experience, said the Buddhists get high for four reasons, and only one reason is for escape and recreation. So it's a tool, just like everything, and to make judgment that it's good or bad is arbitrary. And really, like LSD, now used valid for near terminal, you know, near death uh, patients that have a deep fear of death. It yeah. works. Yeah. Okay. Well, so you know, there's it's uh, and now we have drugs that will get rid of addictions. And when I say addictions, I'm not talking about methadone and things like that. This one's called ibogaine, and it comes from the plant iboga, and it stops even spousal abuse and gambling with one use. And we don't know how it works. It's extremely dangerous, so you just don't do it except in a clinical situation. But I watched in a clinical situation, they took a 16-year IV user off of Amsterdam Park. The guy wanted to quit, but he couldn't. And in a 30-hour intake, shows the nightmares and terrible reaction he's having with nurses around to help. And at the end, when it's all over, 30 hours later, he's, he's uh, doing an outtake or debrief on what just happened with the counselor. He will never use heroin again. And he lit up a cigarette. And he looked at the cigarette, put it down. He doesn't smoke anymore either. Oh, uh, my. What, what, what is that? What's happening here? Yeah. This is Iboga. I've written about it. I have suggested it has something to do with PGO waves in the occipital region of the cerebral cortex. That's the level I work with brain chemistry. I'm oh. a physicist that was doing chip. And listen, back in the early 70s, Delgado, before he was at Yale, had uh, rhesus monkeys with chip implants. And on the other side, Moore was doing ketamine, telepathine, and BZ studies, Jacob Flatter. That's the place I was. And right. I did all the mind control with microwave. Now, you want to know why I left? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us why you left. I didn't go to graduate school to make weapons. Right. My thing just with mind control is Commander Saul. The first ordinance before any other ordinance is used, microwave. And so uh, I didn't go to graduate school to do that. Right. <clears throat> so I'm uh, basically got closer to the earth. You know, there's something more going on. A farmer is like a physicist. <clears throat> you got to have animal husbandry and I have a weld and da 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 da. You know, it's same thing. It's just. What you're seeking is what we call ought art. Okay. Supreme individual sovereignty, where yeah. you are basically a master of your own ship. And you talk to your own God the way you want to. Right, right. Wow, that's amazing. Now, I was wondering why you left, but uh, that's a good reason to me. And, and getting in the earth pulls you back into a natural order that I feel is, is there's just nothing better than that. And I was really excited when I read about your, uh, down in Ch Chattanooga, the work you'd done. I did not know you were doing it in Mexico as well. Yeah, it's also up in BC, up on Vancouver Island. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Now, I would like to uh, briefly get you to tell us a little bit about uh, breath control and martial arts and Tai Chi and that sort of thing, if you could do that. Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> so, sorry about that. I'm just fixing my, my, my microphone a little better. Um, I studied when I, I started. The, back then, I grew up in the Philippines. It was uh, my mom and dad, uh, Indochina Theater. And... Uh, I was four years old, and I started in Buddhist missionary schools 
And so my first languages wasn't even English. I, you know, I spoke Palau and Tagalog and uh, Mandarin one. And so when I came to the United States, dad got me into judo, Red Sato. I am a second degree black. This is like before high school. <laughs> wow. you know, like as a, as a physicist, you know, in the making. And anything I did, anything I did, I did really well. I, it wasn't, uh, <clears throat> I was never number one. <laughs> but I was a competitor and I was number two in almost anything I wanted to do. And so I grew up in Seattle and had the very fortune of studying with John Leong. And John Leong had only four students. There was Bruce Lee, Skip Ellsworth, Fred Williams, who was that big Black Panther, and May. And I studied Hangau. My daughter is in her 40s, does Hangar, which is a more southern form. I raised her in Buddhist missionary schools like me. You know what her title is today? No. She is chief financial officer for the state of Oregon. Oh, my word. $3.7 billion budget. Oh, my <laughs> word. And my daughter does. Uh, yeah, we've been infiltrated. <laughs> that's great that's great well i can't say anything like that but but daddy did um teach us a judo and he built a judo mat out in the uh, on our property and and he taught us to fall correctly and um you do a three, lot of that don't you <laughs> pardon me falling <laughs> oh Learn yeah how to fall first. that's the way you do it <laughs> i yep. get back up you gotta learn how to do it. But uh, that's, yeah, that's exciting. Of course, the flexibility keeps you from hurting yourself. Even well, more. everything's in circles. So I had 18 years of martial arts. They didn't call it that at the time I was taking it. Well, it's time for us to close out this first hour. And we sure would like to have you follow us into the second hour because we've got a lot more exciting dialogue with our special guest. Dr. Richard Allen Miller. So this is Pamela Tartar. You've been listening to Factor 9 on Pure Momentum Network. Please become a member and come into your section, the members section, as we complete this show in the second hour. We invite all our listeners to join us in the members section for the second hour of all our shows. We encourage you to click on the subscribe button, choose a membership type, pay with PayPal, and voila, you're a member. Enjoy all Pure Momentum Network material, the second hour of all talk shows, extra interviews.